So now let's look at the uh, R demonstrations on the general function of function regression models. So we were uh, working on using the uh, the Sweden uh, mortality data. So in this data set, it has the uh, log hazard values uh, for the age 0 to age 80 and uh, range from year uh, 1751 to 1894. So the hazard rate here re uh, represents the rate of death for, um, for individuals at a given age. Um, so, uh, so this uh, Sweden data is not on the FD package. So you have to first uh, uh, set up the uh, the directory where you put uh, this uh, Sweden data. So, um, so I put the Sweden data in this folder, and then I uh, load this uh, data set. Um, So I plot all the data. So this is the uh, hazard curve uh, for each year um, for for the range of the age from uh, zero to eighty. <coughs> so the dimension of this data is uh, eighty one times one hundred forty four. So each column is for the one. One year and the each row is corresponding to one age. Okay. So I also give the uh, the name for the each <coughs> each column as the year from um, 1751 to 1894. Okay. So you can plot the hazard functions at, at, at uh, each year. So this is kind of give the, uh, give the, the hazard functions for 1751, 1810, and 1860. Uh, so you can see definitely uh, the hazard rate is, is, is keep decreasing over the time, right? Yes. Um, yes. OK. Um, So then uh, we will first smooth the, the, the original curve. So uh, here uh, we are using um, 85 uh, B spline basic functions with the order 6. And we using the second derivative to define the reference penalty. And then we, uh, we smooth the, smooth the uh, hazard curves. So this is uh, this is we using the function called plotfit.fd to plot how the fit looks like when we do the when we do the uh, do the fit. As I mentioned uh, uh, at the beginning of the course, uh, for functional data analysis, um, when you do the uh, do the smoothing, actually there's no um, there's no like uh, strict rules in terms of how many base function you use or what's the value of the smoothing parameter you should choose. Therefore, uh, whenever you have the data, you're doing the smoothing, I always recommend you to first uh, to plot how the fit looks like. I, I, I trust, uh, we, we should trust our eyes better than any criteria, okay? Uh, you will, many times you will find out uh, sometimes your coding didn't work or your method doesn't work, maybe because you don't uh, um, smooth your data uh, correctly, okay? So this is, um, this function is to show the how the fit looks like, plot of fit dot fd, and uh, so it you can it can plot uh, for each curve uh, individually. So this is uh, the fit for seventeen uh, fifty one, um, and and uh, you can press ratings to come with the other other years. Okay, and you can see here we definitely uh, kind of overfit the data. The reason is because we want to uh, do the uh, 
do the regression later on. So we want to keep the original data as well as possible. Okay, so therefore we don't uh, put too much smoothing here and and uh, uh, just a little bit of smoothing. We we basically we mostly uh, go through uh, most points here. Okay, so so this graph this graph kind of will give you good ideas like how your uh, basic function working on the on the data for different curves. So then you will not uh, have a surprise later on. Okay. Yes. Okay, so this is the uh, for all these 144 curves looks like. So basically here you can see um, we basically um, overfit all the data, right? We kind of keep the uh, our functional curves actually keep all the original data here. Okay, so now um, we need to uh, so in order to do the regression, uh, we know that uh, for this general uh, functional uh, linear models, uh, we have uh, this uh, bivariate uh, coefficient slope functions, beta s of t, right? So in this case here, um, we were using the tensor product here uh, to, uh, to represent uh, the bivariate functions, basic function for our slope function. Okay, so here uh, we're using uh, 23 um, B-spline basic functions. Um, by default, is using cubic B-splines. Uh, and we also using the, uh, the, the penalty, uh, the roughness penalty, we're using the uh, second derivative. So here the two means the second derivative. And the smoothing parameter, we choose uh, lambda to be 10 to minus 5. We want to be a little bit conservative at the beginning, uh, make sure we don't overfit the, the slope functions. So then uh, you can just use uh, the function called by fd is to construct the, um, the bivariate basic functions for, for the uh, bivariate functions. So basically, uh, you will have this uh, tensor product of each uh, uh, one-dimensional uh, b spline basic functions. You will, you will construct this bivariate uh, functional data uh, uh, object. And uh, so this by FD par is to put the, uh, the, the roughness penalty information there. So here uh, you will use uh, like um, a second derivative for, uh, for both dimension. Uh, so when you um, calculate the, the, the basic functions, uh, so this is uh, how you define the roughness penalty because uh, when you define the roughness penalty, uh, you will have the uh, basically this uh, corresponding to the uh, the second derivative of uh, um, of beta uh, s t uh, to the uh, to 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 s right, and uh, uh, you also have uh, uh, the second derivative of this bivariate function um, with back to um, with back to t, okay, the partial derivatives, okay. So here, uh, you have a lambda uh, s uh, multiplied by this derivative, and you will have a lambda uh, t multiply this uh, uh, derivative with back to t. You can see here, actually, for each dimension s and the t, you can use a different smoothing parameter. And for for here, uh, just for sim simplicity. We choose the lambda s and lambda t both to be ten to three. Okay, the same the same smoothing parameter. Okay, so this is the this is the roughness penalty, um, roughness um, penalty um, for uh, for the bivariate slope function uh, beta s t. Okay. okay. Uh, so this is how you define the. Um, roughing penalty for the bivariate functions, um, and uh, so uh, so here uh, this uh, Sweden beta zero part is for the for the slope from uh, for the intercept functions. So here basically generally you will have a slope function 
on beta zero of t before this uh, uh, before this mod uh, before this integral. Uh, so this is the, the penalty on, on the uh, on the on the beta zero of t. Okay. So roughness penalty for beta zero of t. This is for the the, the intercept. Okay. In intercept functions. Okay. So after you define this, um, so uh, you can see here for the intercept function, we're using a smaller smoothing parameters. Uh, and for because we don't uh, care too much about the intercept functions, so but we put a large roughness penalty on the beta s of t because this beta s of t is a slope function represent the effect of the x on the y. So we want to make sure this beta s of t to be smooth, and then we it will have a easier interpretations. Okay, so after we define this, we can. Uh, Construct the list for the intercept and for the slope basic functions. Okay, this contains the basic function information and also the roughness penalty information. Okay, uh, so then we defined the uh, the y and the x. So uh, so the y will be the uh, Will be the uh, hazard rate um, for the for year from two to one forty four, and uh, the x will be the the previous hazard rate from year one to one forty three. Okay, so this is our y and x, and then we will do the function of function regression models. So for the function and function regression model for this general case, uh, we were using the function called. Uh, a uh, lean mode. Okay, this is to do the function of function regressions. So the uh, the argument is pretty easy. So the first one is the y of t. The second is uh, the x of t. And then this will be the uh, basic functions for your uh, slope and also for your uh, for your intercept. Okay. Uh, so then we will run this uh, uh, function of function linear models. And after you get these uh, uh, results, then uh, you can evaluate uh, this uh, uh, this beta s of t. So this is uh, to come with the beta beta one is the, is the slow functions, and you can evaluate this because our beta s t is a bivariate functions. Uh, so we will use then uh, uh, evaluate dot by f d. This is to uh, evaluate uh, the beta. S of t the slow functions. Okay, so we have this, um, and then we can plot the uh, plot the the how the slow functions looks like. Okay, so this is the slow functions looks like, and and I I find it's hard to look at this. Uh, uh, these uh, uh, 3D plots. Okay, the reason because uh, uh, basically the other half is blocked by this uh, edge, right? So I find it easier um, to plot this uh, uh, color plot. Okay, so this is to plot the uh, the, the the beta s of t uh, using colors. So um, so this. Uh, um, this x axis is the age from 0 to 80, and this y axis is from 0 to 80, and the color here represents the value of beta s of t. Okay, I find this is easier to, to take a look. And uh, so here, um, let me um, first. Uh, so this is the beta s of t looks like. Okay, so you can see here. Um, basically, this beta s of t represents the uh, the effect of the h s on the in the previous year 
on the age t in the next year, right? The the the, the effect. So you can see here, uh, this effect actually is very very small uh, after this diagonal part, right? Okay, and and uh, so it's almost zero here in the most area, right? Okay. Um, what does it mean? It means uh, um, there's uh, not much connections between the um, the previous year to the next year, right? If the age part is 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 more than um, more than this uh, this width, right? So um, to look at how this effect looks like. I actually plot the when the uh, the age lag is 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 just one, okay. So this is uh, the age lag is just one, okay. So you can see basically only this part is kind of a little bit high, right? And uh, uh, yeah. I also look at the the lag to be two to see whether there will be a wider effect. So this deadline is a lag equal to two. Um, yeah. Uh, so this is kind of give you the ideas how how uh, what's the width of this diagonal part uh, when it uh, uh, looks like significant from uh, zero. I guess uh, now the question is to we need to do a, a confidence interval on this beta s of t and to see which part actually is significant from zero, right? Okay, uh, this is the one um, one thing we can do is to to look at uh, uh, which part has a significant effect. Uh, beta s of t is significant from zero, right? Okay, so we can do the confidence intervals. Okay, so I don't do here. Um, but you can do uh, after class uh, uh, yourself. Okay, um, so this is a demonstration uh, for S for doing this uh, functional function regressions for general function regre function regressions.